Um, we extend this one more time. Let me show you this. Save this. We extend this one more time for uh, next week. And uh, even if you take two weeks, uh, we extend it into the realm of data frames and lists and um, like this. Okay, so uh, data frame and list maker where I ask you to do something similar, build a data frame maker that accepts a variable number of uh, all our optional arguments that are vectors. So you pass vectors into this function and it returns a data frame. The vectors that get passed in as the arguments must be equal length. And it just simply binds them up and returns them. Okay, so that's pretty simple. That part's real simple. Uh, but if the number of vectors that are passed in, if they only pass one vector in, then the data frame does its own thing. The data frame maker function does its own thing. It generates two to nine additional vectors of different modes. And it creates a data frame of some variable number of input vectors that can be of any mode, but they must be of the same length. So more than two vectors get passed in, it binds them up and returns it as a data frame. If the user doesn't include a vector or only one, then it self-generates two to nine. So that's the hard part, okay. List maker, this is kind of a fun one. I want you to use this argument, the triple dot, it has a formal name which escapes me at the moment. It's often called triple dot. Triple dot means it, you will, it accepts anything. Triple dot will accept any number of arguments and it will accept any data structures as those arguments. You can use triple dot as a single argument. Here I've included it just as, as all of the arguments, but you can have it just as one argument if you want in a list. Okay, so some sort of list maker that it will accept anything, some combination of vectors, matrices, and data frames as arguments. And it assembles them into a list and it returns the list. If they don't include arguments, they leave this blank, then it should create its own list of at least three components of differing structures or modes. Okay, so uh, this one is fun because lists lists can be lists are may be recursive. They can or uh, they can call themselves, and they can you can have lists within lists. So it's fun to play around with this. Uh, vector maker here you might want to use vector maker inside. Okay, so um, so that's for next week. Okay. Excuse me just a moment here. Let's go back. To lists. And we had almost finished this. We had gone through the the word processing with the New York Times. Couple, let's look at a couple of other things about lists. Lists are very useful. Lists can be recursive. You can have lists within lists. I just mentioned that. So here, uh, here's an example. Let's clear, let's clear this out. Control L and you can clear out the workspace just by hitting clear all in our studio. So we create a list B. We take a look at B. B is a list with two components that are named. One is named U and one is named V. And so here C, we create a second list, W. Take a look. The, uh, this, uh, the, the list is C. It has a one component which has a name, which is W. And that one component, 
which has the name of w, has one element, which is a vector, with one element, 13. Okay, now we're going to bind them up. Okay, note b and c are lists. So we're going to include them inside. So we're making a list out of two existing lists. We put that in a, and we don't name anything. You see what you get, and you see why uh, it's easy to get confused about the use of the single and double bracket uh, indexes. At least I, I get confused all the time. Maybe you don't, but where the single, when you're when you're when you're expressing a list, as we are now, the double bracket usually means a list or a component. And the single bracket usually means an element. However, if you're calling a list, it's the other way around, as you'll see, which is why I always get confused. If you're calling addressing elements in a list, the single bracket refers to the component, and the double bracket refers to the element. And I'm not sure why they did this, but I've, it's very confusing. Okay, so, but here, note that if we look at B, for example, uh, well, actually, we don't have, these are all named, so that's not going to work. We could do this. We could say, uh, let's do this. We could say unnamed B. And B right now looks like this. It has names. Unname should strip them away. It works with vectors. I don't know if it works with lists. We'll find out in a second. It does. So unname, right? So we take the names away. This is the first component of B. This is the second component of B. The double. Okay, now look at A. So A, which is a recursive list, looks like this. It's, it's actually two lists, and you can still see that. Here's the first list in A. Here's the second list in A. And the first list has two components. This is the first list. It has two components. But note they're now both double bracket one because they belong to the first sublist in A, which is this one. And this, as many as we would have here, we only have one. These would all be sub-bracket two. It gets, it gets very computed. It's, it, so A is a two-component list, with each component also being a list. Now, um, you can use concatenate or combine. Sometimes this is called combine, which is the most popular and probably most used function for creating vectors. The C, the C operator. It's used so often, it's often just called an operator. But it has a, an argument recursive, which you can set to true or false. And the default is false. Watch what happens, and uh, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll understand my, my confusion. Okay, so here we're going to create a list. We're using the C operator. We're creating a list of three elements. The first element, A, has a value, has a, the first component, I should say, A, has an element, a vector of one, B. The second component is B. The third component is C. But C is a list by itself. Okay, so anyway, let's do this. So we do this. The default for recursive is false. This list was created with recursive set to false. And yet, this is a list within it. Okay, so uh, this, is, <laughs> this is where I, I get confused. Um, when recursive is set to false, it allows for a list to be in it. When recursive is set to true, it does not allow. Okay, so let's let's look at the second case, okay? Here we'll set recursive to true. It produces a non-recursive list. And 
if I this is correct. I've looked this up numerous times, and uh, that's the way it is. So either recursive means something other than what I think it does, or this is just they they did this wrong, one or the other. But this is what the effect. This is what. So here we say same thing, but we say recursive is true. This is not a recursive list. It appears to be recursive because of the names, but th this is just a named vector. That's all it is with four elements. This is the third element. It's named CD. This is the fourth element. It's named C dot E. Okay, and we're not done. Okay, so these are the simple complex list examples. Let's go to the more fun ones. Save that. And we'll get to an example, a, uh, a prolonged and extended example that shows how you can use a list structure to hold data in such a way that you can query it. You can query it. It's, it's appropriate for that just by itself. Okay, so lists are, ve are very unique. And um, they... They're unique in many ways. Each component can be a different data structure in a different type or mode. So you can assemble just all kinds of junk together in one list, which is why most of the more complex functions, native functions in R, all of your modeling functions, for example, all of your linear, linear modeling, LM and your GLMs and your GAMs and your linear mixed effects models, all of those output lists. Because of this, because you can assemble all of these weird structures, which, is, which are the results of running one of those models, and send them out, send them out into one, in one object. Okay, so this is good. This is the strength. Okay, so... Um, it, it works better than just about any other structure we have in R to do that. So also data frames, which are usually regarded as a simpler structure, are really are specialized kinds of lists. The irony is that a list, the complex list, actually is just a vector. It's a special vector that allows each component to be a vector. Okay, so data frames, if you query the type, if you query the class of a data frame, it'll tell you it's a data frame, but if you ask a data frame if it's a list, it will say yes. Data frames are specialized kinds of lists. They're restricted lists. Okay, so let's take a look at some more examples and you'll see why I always get twisted Okay, so here we're creating one. We use the list command, which is the easiest. And um, so we have four elements to this. The first one is string. The second one is Boolean. The third one is a vector of numbers. The fourth one is a vector of strings. And then we look. So here's our return. And now we're going to go in there and, and index, reference, access some of these individual elements. Well, if we say my list with just a single bracket 2, we end up with the second sublist. If we say, and, and note my confusion, when you, when the, this is my point, when you express the list, here's the list, the original list, each component, unless it's named, is called double bracket and the, the index number. But when you call it, if I want to call the second component, I use a single bracket. That's the point I'm trying to make. I don't know why they did that. It seems upside down, but okay. So we called the second component. Note it doesn't return a 2, it returns a 1, because this is the expression of this. 
On the other hand, let's go back and look at my list again. My list is not changed. It's still this original four component list. If we say I want this element, this is actually the element of the fourth component, not the component itself. So double bracket four just returns this vector. 